Hello again and welcome to part two of this week's catch-up se sessions from the uh, previous stream on Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And well, as you can see, there's been some building going on in the last stream. Down on Talos, we've had a fairly severe shortage of methane ice for quite a long time because, well, it was, it was getting brought in, in in some quantities by the spaceships that are coming over from uh, Stardust and also by the ones coming over from uh, Norvis, which are bringing over the, the um, methane ice that was being produced as a byproduct from the uh, Vitamalanche processing. However, that was woefully inadequate, and these machines down here were being absolutely starved for it because producing uh, Naquium over here requires a lot of methane nice and so we're having all kinds of, this system was shutting down it was stopping producing the naquium quite a lot and usually that was the problem if we take a look at the production over the last 10 hours well you can see it's been it's been pretty bursty we've had quite we've had significant amounts of time when it's been just completely down and i think all of this was probably due to the lack of methane ice and other areas it, it's hard to say because there have been quite a few problems with lots and lots of different things failing but most recently the methane ice was a serious problem and so in order to fix that well i had a few th i had a few thoughts of, of different ways to do it one was to bring over a lot more uh, methane ice in the in the train that's been coming down from the uh, from the stardust ship so bring a lot more methane ice over from Stardust and, and supply that. And I started doing that a bit, actually. If we look up in orbit, I've set a much larger request number here. This is now minus 20,000 instead of, I think it was about two or 5,000 before. So there's a much larger amount of methane ice being requested. And that means that'll be brought over from Norvis if it's available. But the same signal is being sent off to Stardust as well, which means that these ships will have been bringing over more methane ice. And as you can see, there's, there's a, a few thousand in there. That's not too bad. There's 44,000 in here. So that's, actually, there's quite a lot being brought down by the, by the trains at the moment. And this is quite possible that this would actually have ended up being enough. But I decided after looking around a little bit, it'd be a good idea to go off to Kalidas Asteroid Belt 2 because this area ha is a methane ice primary. There's a lot of it available out there. And so I came out here and lo and behold, there was indeed a massive chunky methane patch, ice patch here. And there were a few of them to be fair. So this one I cl I've, I've claimed over here is 177 million. Uh, and there's a few others. Uh, there's an 88 million over there. There's another 127 million there. 165 million there. So basically, I've just picked the biggest one because why wouldn't you? There's another 116 million over there. So if this one ever runs out, maybe I'll just move up and move my entire base of operations over to here. However, in the meantime, yes, I've set up on this patch. And I did a bit of thinking about how I was going to power this factory. And this, this I think, has probably been the most complicated part of the whole system. And so there were a few ideas. The uh, obvious one, uh, the obvious first point was uh, was to put a set up a solar field, but there's a few problems with that. And, and top of the list is that we only get 20% solar effectiveness out here, and so that's, that's that's not very much. And so I'd have to put out five times as many solar panels as you'd expect, and uh, in fact even more than that, because say Norvis orbit, which is where most of our solar is, that's 466%. So maybe I'd have to set out 23 times as much solar as you'd expect. And now I don't expect this area to be enormously power hungry. If we take a look at it, we're only using. Uh, 65 megawatts, which isn't a huge amount, but even so, uh, setting up enough solar to produce that at 20% productivity would require a fair number of solar panels, and this area may end up expanding or having modules put in or something like that. That didn't seem didn't seem like a great idea. I could have done a beam emitter, uh, put another beam emitter in in Kalidus orbit and beam the uh, power out to uh, out, out here. That works. That's how we're powering Snowdrop after all. There's a beam firing out of here and we're uh, and that's keeping this nice and toasty. We're then using that heat to boil water and then turbines to turn that into electricity. So yeah, I mean that's theoretically possible, but that requires water. So I'd have had to find a way of shipping water out to there, out to a uh, Kalidus asteroid belt too as well. And that seems slightly awkward. As, as, as I remember, I don't think there are any significant water patches around here. So or water ice patches perhaps. I should say. There's, okay, there's a 35,000 there. That wouldn't keep me going for very long. 200,000 there. You can see it's not a great, not a great one either. And there's a lot more moving parts. And it felt like it felt like a bad idea. Uh, I could have done nuclear power, bring out, but that would require bringing out nuclear fuel cells and also water as well. So that's not really on. So in the end, I decided the best way to do it would be to set up another singularity reactor. And these are the ones that we've been using out in Fenestra to produce massive amounts of power from matter. Now I didn't want to have to set up some sort of system for bringing matter out here. So I decided the best way to do this would be, well, this asteroid has a load of iron ore on it on this side, and has a bit of stone on this side. So we're digging those up as well. They're being passed into this warehouse here, and then these two matter plants are churning through those, turning the iron ore and the stone into, what well, into matter, that can then be passed down these pipes here, and will go into this into this matter assembler here, which is which we're using to fill up the, the matter fuel cells, at least when we have any. So the empty singularity fuel cells can be put into there from this generator up here. They'll be filled up with matter that's generated from the iron ore or the stone, and then they'll be passed back through up into here where they can then be burned in order to produce the electricity we need. 
And so this means we've got essentially. Well, I'm not going to say we've got an unlimited amount of power. It's not. A, it's not as completely hands off and touch free as solar is. However, there's quite a lot of iron ore down here. We have uh, 2.1 million of it here, so I think that's probably going to be okay for a good long time. We'll dig that up, we'll pass it over here, and we can make that into matter, and as you can see, and that gives us a pretty good healthy supply of matter that we can then turn into um, in, in, into the uh, fuel cells and burn in here. It also means that there's a, a sort of a, a release valve for any, any iron ore or stone that we accidentally dig up along with the methane ice. So you can see here that this is digging up a, combi a combination of stone and methane ice at the moment, which is getting fed into the, um, into the warehouse here, and then that stone is getting passed out into this matter plant to take it away and so it doesn't get it doesn't clog up the warehouse. I've also put limiters on the where on at least most of the belts around the warehouse. And these ones, for example, are saying only load the warehouse up if there's less than 5,000 methane ice in there. This one's saying only load it up if there's less than 2,000 iron ore. And so that will stop it filling up excessively. Although we do now have almost 10,000 methane ice, but that's because it's all flooding in from this belt over here because I wanted to let the uh, stone flow in and I wasn't quite sure which limit to put on it here. Yeah, maybe I, this one should probably also be linked in. So what if we take a, another red cable, link that across there like that, and then tell this one to run when stone is less than 2,000. There we go. So that's now stopped that one. But whenever there's a shortage of stone in here, then we'll allow this to run. It'll, it'll, it'll bring a bit of stone in. Yes, it'll also overflow with a load of methane ice, but that shouldn't really be a problem. We then have lots of belts coming out the top here, going up to the normal sort of spaceship system. This is an entirely normal uh, spaceport, with the one exception being that I've removed a load of the inserters on this side because, and, and the warehouses on this side, because the only thing that's being brought out here by the spaceship is meteor defence ammo, because we don't need anything else. This this site is completely self-sufficient. The power is coming from these, the, there are no trains, it's resources coming out, it just requires mining, it doesn't require any other funny business, so we've just got a very, very simple setup here. The spaceship drops in, fills up with methane ice, unloads maybe a little bit of um, meteor defense ammo, and then it can head off again. From that point, it gets a little bit more complicated, but let's have a, let's, let's touch a little bit more on the, the things we've been doing over here first. And I'm very, very pleased with the uh, with the way I set up the uh, the power over here. This, I think, was a great idea, and it's uh, it's maybe not the, the best and most efficient idea, but solar panels would probably have been better. But we've been having a bit of a problem with producing solar panels in large enough quantities, so, and also, this is interesting. And I think doing something interesting is often better than doing something that's just generally straight up a good idea. So I'm, I'm quite happy with what I've done here. I like this idea. I did make one big mistake though. I came out here with a load of empty singularity fuel cells thinking well I'll just fill them on site from whatever resource I dig up over here. And I mean it did work but it took a very very long time to fill this up because while we were waiting, while we were trying to bootstrap it we were powering the drills and the matter assemblers off my spaceship and my spaceship was only capable of giving out I don't know 10 megawatts or something like that from its solar panels because we're so far from the sun out here so it wasn't producing very much power and that meant it took for absolutely forever to process enough matter and then put it into the uh, in, into the cell to then fire up the generator here. Once the reactor was going then it was great and now we now have plenty of power if we, if we look at over here you can see we're, we're capable of producing two gigawatts. Um, I mean, technically, that is the reactor is capable of producing two gigawatts. I'm not sure how, how what the rate of iron ore production over here is going to be capable of producing, but it's, it's it's absolutely fine at the moment. And the amount of power we're using, we could be using power a lot faster and still be fine. And we're using. 100 megawatts of that 2 gigawatts. And the reason I know it's fine is if we look in here, we've got seven singularity fuel cells sitting here fully charged waiting to be used. There's one being burned and then there's two, the other two of the 10 that I chucked in are sitting down here in the output. So we've got we've actually got nine full fuel cells and then a decent chunk more and we don't have any left to be filled up and the system is sleeping and waiting. So this shows that we have far more power than we need. This system is, is great. It's working very, very nicely. I'm very happy with it. However, I do wish that when I come out with two or three fully charged singularity fuel cells that were already full of matter that I could have just chucked in here and would have had power from the very start rather than having a bit of a little bit of a crisis of going, oh no, I'm trying to power everything off the spaceship and it's really, really slow because that was a little bit annoying. This system only really works sensibly because these, these singularity reactors, unlike other reactors, will burn through their fuel like, like a boiler does. So they will only use the fuel when it's actually required. It's not like, um, it's not like a nuclear reactor or, or an antimatter reactor where the fuel goes down at a constant rate and you have a certain amount of heat and if you don't use the heat then it's wasted. If we had that then I'm not sure what I'd do. I might have to, there, at that point I might have had to store some steam or in batteries or something. It would have been a lot worse, a lot harder. Or just waste an enormous amount of matter making the, uh, making the fuel cells. But because they work like um, boilers, this system works really, really nicely. 
And so, as I say, that means we now have a spaceship that is going from the asteroid belt too. It will then fly from here and take all of that methane ice off to Talos, which is here. It will then land in Talorbit, where it will unload all of the methane ice. And as you can see, we've got quite a lot going on here. So I think this spaceship has run at least twice now, because we've got we've had one load that's unloaded into these warehouses, then filled up this warehouse, filled up the train however many times, and some of it's been taken down. And then it's landed again, filled up these warehouses as much as possible. And yeah, okay, there's... There's a couple, a couple, maybe 150 stacks left in the warehouses on here, so we'll get through it eventually. It doesn't really matter um, because we've got a plentiful supply. We've got four warehouses absolutely full over here. And then there's a train, as you would imagine, that comes up to here, up the space elevator, and then comes down, pulls around here, and just parks up here where we can then unload a load of the methane ice. I put a limiter on this warehouse. To be honest, I might get rid of this warehouse and replace it with just a, a, a four to one balancer that goes onto this belt and then feeds down here and goes into this warehouse, which is um, also also has a limit put on it. But I think, yes, we're only feeding in from this supply when there's a bit of a shortage in there. And that ensures that we'll use up the, the, the methane ice that's being brought from Stardust and from Norbit first, because that's a, that's a higher priority, really. We want to get through that by preference and then use this as a top up, because if, if we don't use up what we're bringing from the other places, then we could end up with a jam at some point. And we don't want that. We don't want, we don't want to have things breaking because of that, for, that, for silly reasons like that. And so, yeah, we've got, we've got a prioritization system set up nicely there, and that will use the resources at, 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 in the correct order. But it does mean we've got a functionally unlimited amount of uh, methane ice here because there's a crazy amount of it available. I don't see I don't see us having any problems ever again with methane ice. And I know that's an extremely broad statement, but I honestly, the, the rate it's coming in at, I can't see it ever being an issue. Once the ship leaves Talos, unlike most of our ships, this isn't a point to point where, where it goes A, B, A, B, A, B ship. This um, can't go, if you can't go back to Khalid's asteroid belt too, because it needs to pick up the meteor defense ammo, which Technically, we could steal from Talos, I suppose, but it also needs to refuel the spaceship. And whilst we could start making Ion Stream somewhere else, it didn't seem worth it, especially because there's the two things in there. And so we've then got the ship flying from there all the way up to Norvis, or to Norbit rather, and then filling up with the Meteor Defense ammo and then refueling its tanks there. And from there, it does have enough fuel to then complete the, do the complete loop back out to Khalid's Astro Belt 2 and then back over to Talos and back up to Norbit. So this is a three a three stop ship. I did look into having a system that detects how much fuel is left in the ship when it gets to Tal Orbit and then decides whether it needs to be sent back to Norvis for refueling or whether it can go straight back out to Kalidus Asteroid Belt 2. However, when it got there, it turned out it had used a significant amount of its fuel up already. And so after only one trip, it was already at a point where I didn't feel entirely comfortable with it doing a second trip. So I decided that there's no point. <clears throat> if it had bigger tanks, then yeah, sure, we could shuttle back and forth and then just go off to refuel when necessary. It would be fairly easy to implement. We just have one of the uh, controls over here. Rather than just straight up setting the next destination here like I am, here, we'd, we'd look at the amount of fuel available and say if there's more than such and such an amount of fuel, then go to uh, Kaleidos Asteroid Belt 2. If there's less than or equal to a certain amount of fuel, then go to Norbit and re to, in order to refuel. It'd be fair, it'd be quite simple to set up, but it wasn't. It ended up not being necessary because I actually didn't want the ship to do to uh, decide based on its amount, amount of fuel it had left. Because for four tanks down here, it can hold enough to do the trip uh, once but I'd not convinced it would hold enough to do it twice and it'd be a, a little bit borderline, so I'd rather not risk it. And given how, how long it takes to get through a spaceship's worth of methane ice, I think that was probably the right decision. The next place I want to take a look at is Njord, where Tristan has been, I think has now finished off the improvements to the Holmium processing he's made. And as you can see here, well, there's a nice there's a nice solid yellow belt of uh, Holmium ingots coming through here. And apparently Tristan says that the, uh, sometimes it produces about, uh, sometimes it produces a whole belt like that. Sometimes it produces just over half a belt like this. And that depends almost entirely on whether, whether there's been a train of core fragments coming in. So I guess that means the amount of ore being processed is essentially doubled when there's any core fragments to churn through, which is fair enough. I mean, that makes sense. We've got, we've got the core fragments coming in here along the, along the belts at a, at a rate, and it's just gradually increasing here as the uh, train unloads properly. So when that flows in here, we then have twice as much infrastructure building it. Uh, so yeah, I guess that makes that makes a decent amount of sense. Uh, he's all, but he does also have a supply of holmium, or holmium, holmionite ore coming in like this from uh, from various mines and going down to um, another set of processing machines, which are in the, actually in the same column, just a little bit further down. And these ones don't have the uh, pre the first set of uh, core pulverization on the beginning of it, so they're just the same idea, just slimmed down ever so slightly. And this is working quite nicely because he's he's also increased the amount of um, these these uh, cation exchange beads or these anion exchange beads. I don't know. He's 
says he's put in another 50% production of blue balls, so that's going twice as quickly as before. Uh, that might be due to speed modulings over here, or it might just be more machines. Either way, he's making lots and lots of those, and that seems to be sufficient. It looks like over here we have all of the inputs we could need, with the possible exception of the holmium cores, but that's running, it's running really, really nicely, and that's how we've got this lovely flow of holmium coming out over here. He's also added in even more hydrogen chloride production, so before I think it was down to about, maybe down to about here, so we've had in, in this, this extra chunk here added in, it's heavily moduled and beaconed, it's twice, it's twice as dense as before. This is this is great, we're getting, so there's, I suppose there's, there's four, four uh, pulverizers worth here, and then and three up here, so he's more than doubled it, if, if, if my estimates are right, or maybe there was a fourth one there, so he's almost doubled it. Either way, that means we have some nice full pipes over here with loads of hydrogen chloride in, and I think he said he put in a, a, some storage tanks, yes here we go, there's some storage tanks up here that's making sure there's got, he's got a little bit of a buffer, so if there's a surge in, uh, in demand, then he can, he can deal with that as well. So that's going very, very nicely. Of course, improve, fixing all of this up and making this work properly meant that you just ran into another, another shortage. And this time it was, was of copper. And the copper is coming from over, way, way over here. So we've got, uh, let's look and zoom in here. Yes, we've got a copper mine here that's digging up copper. That's then being uh, processed down by these uh, smelteries over here. He's doing it the quick and easy way, which to be honest is fair enough. I noticed that he's got some old industrial furnaces up here and then modern um, advanced furnaces down here. So. Yeah, you can see the two different tiers of tech here. Although I don't think there's a great deal of difference between them apart from the speed they run at. You can put the same number of modules in them. Um, although that said, a machine that runs faster and takes the same modules is going to be much more efficient in terms of module use. So in the long run, if, we, if he comes in and puts in more expensive modules than the tier threes he's got here, which he is a little bit at the bottom, uh, then it will be far better to use the advanced furnaces. For the tier three modules, I think we just don't care because they're so cheap. But anyway, that is producing a quantity of copper and that is then coming down, down the belt over here to go over to be because that because for some reason you need copper in the um, in, in the processing for for the holmium and that comes all the way down oh okay down over here uh, oh and it's been made into a copper cable so ah yes here we go we've got a couple of machines making copper cables here and the funny that's the funny thing about the really advanced machines and these aren't even oh yes they are they're, they're speed moduled by this beacon up here but they run so fast that I was able to just zip past and go yep that's a copper belt that's a copper belt it's probably gone under some machines here oh wait they've turned into cables how did that happen you can easily miss out uh, some machines here that are capable of producing a crazy, crazy quantity. Well, an entire blue belt's worth of, um, of copper cables just, just by themselves. But anyway, those are then fed in down here, and that's enough to keep this whole system down here running, as you can see. We've got... We, I was going to say, we, are, we, are we backlogging up here? We are a little... I mean, one side of the belt seems to be filling up quite nicely. The other side, not so much. Um, it doesn't seem to be a problem, and I think, yeah, I think this is coming in faster than it's being used. So, yeah, that's great. We are, the, the, the copper is coming in at a suitable rate. Everything is, is hunky-dory and working very, very nicely. And so that's, yeah, that seems to be good. The hardest part of this, as I was saying last week, is making sure he's got enough stone coming in. So now we've got some better, slightly faster stone belts along here. They've, they've been upgraded to blue from the yellows we saw before. And there's some, I think there's some funny prioritisation going on up here. These will be disposal belts from core processing or something like that. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, but the, the stone being brought along here, which is presumably then going to get passed into the... Okay, it goes into this warehouse and then gets passed back out again. This is all a bit spaghetti, but, you know, as long as it works, it doesn't really matter. But he's got it, so he's got, this means he's ended up with a decent amount of stone coming down here, going into all these machines, to make all the hydrogen chloride he needs. And the reason he's got a decent amount now is because loads of it is being brought over and then down down with the train from up in orbit. We're up here, well, we, we have a, a spaceship parked here which has, well, it's, it's filling up at the moment. It's got 10,000, uh, it's got about 30,000 holmium in it. That's pretty good. And a load of uh, miscellaneous trash. It's about two-thirds full so it'll depart fairly soon only a few more trains before that can go um, but the important thing over here is we've got loads and loads of resources that are being poured out down these belts and you've got two belts that come down here and the, they're, they're feeding down to fill up this warehouse here which is then being loaded up with these eight superior inserters down here and that means he can fill the train up much more quickly than he could before when it was the two belts coming down here and being fed directly into it so this is far better this is this is, this is really good this is much better it's going to fill, fill the trains up much more quickly which means we can then have a much healthier supply of stone going down to the ground in order to be made into all the resources he needs. Now he has said he's had to dis dispatch ships manually a couple of times. Hopefully he's now got enough stone coming in on each ship to produce a ship's worth of holmium and byproducts. Um, I imagine that shouldn't be a problem, but I guess we'll wait and see over time. And he says he hasn't done the maths himself either, he's just sort of being cautiously optimistic about it, much like I was. He has, however, built a second spaceship to do this route um, because he was he wanted to make sure he was getting enough stone over quickly enough to keep everything running nicely and ideally just to keep the holmium flowing because we've had some serious problems with holmium shortages in the past. And so he's, he's been thinking about a way to make this ship 
depart when the other ship arrives. So when a ship full of stone and whatever else is required by this place arrives here, if this one's still here and hasn't managed to fill up, then either the system is running too slowly or there's a problem. Uh, and so if we assume that the latter case, then we want, might want to tell this ship to depart. And he's been brainstorming a few ideas on how to do that. And it'd be possible to put a signal transmitter on the ship so when it, uh, when it arrives somewhere it can t send a signal out that will be picked up here and then we'll tell this ship to depart. That's possible. It's not very nice because signal transmitters are quite big and it's, a, it's, it's not a particularly elegant solution. Another idea he was tempted by is having a timer somewhere that uh, monitors as when the ship leaves Norbit, when the other ship leaves Norbit, and we can then work out how, roughly how long it takes to get from Norbit to Njordbit, and um, if it's been sort of maybe five minutes longer than that, or a couple of minutes longer than that, or something like that, then then you tell this ship to depart because it's clearly it's taking too long. We want the other ship to come in and start filling up as well. Um, this all assumes that the amount of stone that's brought over by the ship is going to be insufficient to fill it up completely. If it turns out that the amount of stone that a ship can carry is easily enough to make a ship full of um, whole and all the byproducts that go with it, then we don't need to worry about any of that because the ship will be able to just sit here until it fills up and then head off and we'll get the standard flow rate, the flow rate of whatever the system is capable of without having to do any funny business or shenanigans. So I think checking whether that's going to, whether it's going to work without any um, cleverness is going to be the first step. Although knowing what Tristan's like, there's a, there's a reasonable chance he's just going to want to set that up because he thinks it's going to be fun and interesting. And you know what, I can't really argue with that. If something's fun and interesting, you might as well give it a shot. We've been having some difficulties with our supply of stone and there's a chance that this is partly because Tristan has been taking loads and loads of it off to um, his Holmium planet in order to make the Holmium as we've just discussed. But mostly I think it's down, been down to sort of poor logistics-ness. Uh, and so we've been trying to work with that and sort it out. And so as you may or may not remember, a lot of our stone comes from Andragon and it's get brought over to here. It's put, this, Andragon is a stone primary, um, but Mike has been trying to dig up absolutely everything he can from it. And that's mm, going so-so. Not going brilliantly because of uh, some oversights, should we say? But, it, but we are at least we're getting a lot of stone through, and that's the important part. So all of that stone is getting brought over to here. It's being dumped into the station, and that means it can then be taken off to wherever it's needed, as you'll be very, very familiar with. And a lot of that goes down the secondary elevator, down onto the ground here, unloaded, where it's passed through this, this, this train system over here, where it's, we can put it into these trains, and then whenever we need it, need extra stone somewhere because we haven't got enough coming out of the um, out of the core processing, these trains can be dispatched to take it to wherever it's needed. Great, that all works really, really well. The problem we ran into was that we, we ran out up in space. And so we wondered at first, is that because we don't have enough logistics, if we don't have enough throughput on the spaceships? And so a second spaceship was made to do the flight trade between um, uh, Norbit and Andragorbit, whatever we whatever we want to call that. So we've got two ships now. One was, as you saw, parked in Norbit just now. And if we look over Andragon, we can see a second one here that's being gradually filled up as it's um, as the trains come up, bringing bringing all of the nonsense that we require. And that's about uh, a bit over half full. So is going is going okay, especially as the ship at the other end wasn't remotely empty. So that was okay. And so the second ship was put in to see if that was see if that would help with the problem. Um, but Tristan saw that a one of the ships bounced, and we we get occasional ships bouncing, and that's that seems to happen when they land and then. And they leave basically immediately. So if they do that, they'll land. They'll they'll be there for maybe two or three seconds, maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell, especially as the game's running at half speed. They'll unload a little bit. They'll load a little bit, but then they'll leave well much much earlier than they should. And so Mark has designed a system to prevent that from happening. It's essentially a little timer that uh, monitors how long the ship has been there and says it's not allowed to leave if it hasn't been there for 30 seconds. Uh, and those go in as a set of combinators that go in down here. So we can tell, looking at this one, that this this stage this spaceport has not been up to updated with the latest design that has the bounce protection system in it. And so that means there is, if we if we understand the cores properly, a 1 in 60 chance of these spaceships bouncing every time they arrive. And when they do that, it just means they end up wasting the trip because they, they'll fly back to Norbit, still, still empty of all the resources they're meant to have, but full of the resources they're meant to be bringing out to, well, in this case, Andragon. And so that's a complete waste of time, waste of fuel, waste of everything, and causes major problems in our uh, in our logistics system. Uh, so we've been going around gradually updating the ships, but it looks... Or gradually updating the spaceports rather, but it looks, it looks like this one hasn't been done yet because it's missing the chunks down there. I did end up fixing this one over in Talos orbit for the, uh, the Talos Naquium ships. This is the one that brings out all the supplies for making Naquium and then takes back the Naquium that, that's, that's been made from those supplies. And so I've put in the extra combinators down here and as I was saying, this, this, this monitors for is there basically is there a ship here? So it's looking for the signals coming out of the spaceship to see if there's an anchor to target right clamp there. And if there is, then, if, sorry, if there isn't, then it resets the counter. 
The counter then counts away down here, la 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 la, uh, until it gets to 1800, which is 30 seconds, and then it outputs a tick. And we can watch for those ticks up here. So you can see at the moment, it's not outputting a tick because the spaceship, there hasn't been a spaceship here for 30 seconds. So there's, so there's no tick being sent up here, which means if a spaceship does land, it can't leave because we won't be able to get enough ticks through to this, even if we're getting erroneous mess messages from all of the other combinators around here, which is relatively easy to do. So if you see over here, we were looking for three ticks, one of which is the timer one, and we're currently getting two ticks on the input. So if a spaceship arrived, it could leave immediately if it checks straight away because these inserters are currently idle. They're not doing anything. And these warehouses are currently full. And these ware these inserters are currently idle. So all of these things, it looks to the circuit system as if, there's, as if it's ready for a spaceship to leave. So we need to have an extra thing in here to check if there is actually a spaceship here. And so we thought, well, we might as well just have a timer on there because we're never going to want a spaceship to be here for less than 30 seconds because it takes longer than that to swap anything in and out. So this, this makes a big difference in there. And if you want more detail on how that works, check out the, uh, the Mark Spaceships tutorial video that I did a little while ago because I go into quite extreme detail on basically how every little bit of this system works. And Tristan noted the good news that by the end of the stream, the stone was soon to be back, backed up. As you can see, we've got a train parked. I was going to say, we had a train parked there and not loading. It's needed somewhere, so it's heading off now. But we have we have plenty in the uh, in the warehouse here. We've got plenty in these warehouses down here. Stone, stone is good. We have a lot of stone available at the moment. I have no worries here. Speaking of ships, I had the idea, well, because every so often I'll get into my spaceship and I'll go somewhere because that's, well, that's how you play the game. Um, but you need to, yeah, so I'll, whenever I need to build something that needs more supplies, I'll get in my spaceship, I'll set, I'll uh, load it up with what I need, and then I'll fly to wherever it's needed. Great. However, while it's flying, because it takes a quantity of time to get somewhere, and I and I don't want to be just sort of staring at a spaceship flying through the voids of space for 20 minutes or however long it ends up taking, um, I decided it'd be a good idea to put an alarm on it to alert me when it gets to places. So I've got this signal, I've got this uh, programmable speaker down here that's monitoring the uh, the signals on the on the uh, spaceship console, and we're looking for a speed of minus one, and that means I believe that means stopped and it always somewhere or something like that. And when that happens, we will show an alert saying blue signal, Lawrence has arrived. Great. The problem is <laughs> there are so many alerts being shown because of other things being broken. Like we have low Naquim, low Holmium, Meridium, Vitor Extra. There's a bus station. I don't even know what bus station means. I do know it's something to do with Tristan. I think he was updating some stations and he wanted to be alerted when the next stage needed to be done. And we're also short of fact. How can we be short of Vulcanite? I don't even I don't even believe that one. Um, so yeah, there's loads of other signals there, and they and they end up hiding the Lawrence has arrived signal. So we need to. Basically, we need to fix all of these things that we're short of, and we're working on that. Um, the Naquium is flowing very slowly. The Holmium is now flowing at a decent rate and probably filling up some buffers. We're not short of Iridium either. I, 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 um, I'm skeptical about all of these warning signals. Let's go and have a look at the graph. So these are all tied into the graph down here, and apparently we are short. We apparently we have we are completely out of Iridium, which seems very strange. Vita extract. Actually, I can believe that one because we've been churning through crazy amounts of that. And what was the other one? Oh yeah, and apparently we're really low on um, Vulcanite as well. So let's go back to the source of truth. Actually, it turns out we are very, very low on Iridium. We have none of it. We don't even have enough to fill a train up. That's interesting. I thought that was a solved problem. I guess that's going to be something to look into. And over here, we seem to have a bit of a shortage of Vulcanite. Now, there is a there is a, a problem with it. Well, we, we do have a full warehouse over here, so we need some emergency downstream trains to come over and take this away, which will help. Um, there don't seem to be any on their way over. Oh, there's, there's, there's a couple moving, so... Maybe one of those is on its way to here. I, I sincerely hope so. Because, yeah, we've got a full warehouse here. We need to get rid of that. However, there is also a bit of a shortage of uh, Vulcanite here. Uh, looking in this warehouse, we see that we have 42 stacks. So if that train goes and comes back, we aren't going to have enough to fill it back up again. So that's a worry. What is going on on Agnair? Right, so there's no, there's no ship flying between Agnair and Norbit at the moment. There is Vulcanite being produced at a rate going into the train down here. And ah, the train, the spaceship up here has just filled up and is about to depart. That was impressively good timing. Okay, so the ship, the Agnair ship is, Agnair seems to be working. However, does it, could it mean that this, that we are producing it too slowly? That's, um, Alarming because I thought we, I thought we had massive vulcanite production, um, but I guess we've just expanded. Maybe we've expanded the base, the factory, so much that we now need more than we're capable of. Now at least it's not too far to fly from Agnair to Norvis, so maybe that will um, will sort that one out. But I am a bit concerned about the rate we appear to ma be making or not be making it at. And if we look here, there is a lot of vulcanite flowing in. You can see some um, healthy healthy belts full coming down from all of the systems up there and from over here. That's a lot of vulcanite. We don't seem to have any problems here. I guess we're just 
I guess we're just using it up at a, cr a crazy rate, and it might be time to com consider coming over here and maybe doing more upgrades. I don't know. I mean, we've got, yeah, this actually looking looking at this, this could take quite a bit of upgrading. We're only using tier three modules everywhere because that's the age of the system. Uh, we are only using blue belts, so we could upgrade the belts and the modules, maybe the productivity ones, certainly the speed ones, and get a lot more flowing through here. Certainly a possibility. The question is, would the mining then be able to keep up? And that the hope is that it would. Uh, looking around here, I'm not convinced that it would though, because well, we have we have trains unloading in most of the stations, but yeah, I might need to go and have a look at the uh, the vulcanite again at some point because it's hanging on at the moment, just about. I mean, I don't in this, I don't think we're going to run out, but this isn't the sort of healthy supply I would like to see. Looking at vulcanite cubes over the last ten hours, we've been making three thousand seven hundred per minute. We've been using three thousand seven hundred per minute, and um, that's sort of what you'd expect if the supply was healthy. But since the buffers aren't full, it's a little bit more worrying. Um, and you can tell, you can see, there's been a significant increase in the amount of vulcanite we've been using. I'd say the average was about here for all of this time, and now the average is up to about here. So yeah, that's quite that's quite a big jump and uh, looking back over 50 hours yeah there's even more of an increase along there um, so yes I can see how I can see why this has become become slightly problematic some more upgrades might be required over here which could mean more mines required or more trains going to the mines I don't know what, how much we've got uh, there's quite a lot in the in the warehouse here so maybe more trains would do it uh, oh and there's there's extra mines over here so we shouldn't have a shortage of it we might I might just need to put in several more trains in order to make sure there's enough enough throughput really well we are, we are we're starting to stack trains up a little bit down here yeah, yeah it's, hmm, it's a different it's a tricky one more trains and more stacking space out at the mines will probably will probably fix any problems we're seeing around here though so i think we should be uh, i think we should be okay without too much effort um but we might need to come in and put and upgrade some of the modules around here at least if we do that that's quite an easy fix more mod better modules and more trains and upgraded belts should be pretty straightforward to do and, um, and get everything running a little bit faster and then fill the trains up more quickly maybe put in a second train is there a second train already there is a second train already and it stopped so yeah i think i think having increasing the rate there would probably be uh, would have would have potential Taking a quick look at Kothar, well, we have a two-thirds full ship over here, so I guess it's going to go in the not-too-distant future, um, but I, since I, I hope there isn't a problem with the raid. Given the amount of time and effort that Mike has spent upgrading all of the Iridium production, I don't want there to be a problem over here. I want this to be running nice and smoothly and just generally very, very well, but I do see some stops in here. Now, I think some of these stops were because we had loads of it. We had enough, and therefore the system had stopped because it was full. So how it's gone from completely full to completely empty in not very long, I don't know. I think we'll have to take we'll have to take a look into it. But if we look over the last hour, it's been running fairly solidly. There's been tail offs there. I don't know. I think I think this is going to need a little bit of an investigation because we don't want to run out of iridium, and I'm surprised we seem to be having problems with it given how much we've been producing and and how quickly it filled the buffers back up again um, a couple of weeks ago. So it's a little bit of a mystery, but one for us to look into on Monday, so um, the, in the next stream, so um, please come along to that one. And also come along on Wednesday for the uh, for the satisfactory stream where I should be uh, carrying on with building up my factory and, and getting everything running nice and quickly. I will of course be back at the weekend with some more catch-up videos, so I hope to see you then. And I'm going to do, do quite a quick intro because this is getting a bit long. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.